Hello and welcome to my garage. My name's Zane and um, I'm going to be doing a update to my Archicad tutorials from a few years ago. So the first one um, I'm going to do today is basically just setting up your drawing um, and, and your workspace. Um, which is always a really important bit to get right because you get stuck with whatever you started off with. Um, so when you first launch Archicad um, and you do a new document um, you'll be presented with this window here. We can click on new though and get this palette Sorry. Um, and here we can choose a template so if you're in a, a drawing office you might find that your CAD technician has set up your workstation with a whole bunch of company templates so you could choose one of those templates or you could even create your own later on. Um, down the bottom here has got the work environment profile so um, I'm going to use the default profile in here so if um, I can ask you to do the same, if you, especially if you've been using Archicad. This will set up your um, your document or your workspace with the default standard profile, and that way it will look the same as what mine looks like. All right, so we can go new, and you should end up with a drawing that looks very similar to mine. Now, by default, um, Archicad, um, or in the, I should say, in this template, um, it includes um, some elevation so you can see here it says east elevation north elevation etc etc um, and there's a few um, con oh, a few palettes that I would highly recommend that we switch on so we're going to start off there so first of all let's go up to window palettes and I'm going to go to the coordinates palette okay so that's coordinates palette um, it gives us the ability to do things like angle the grid which we cannot see at the moment um, I don't know why, but at some stage the Archicad template dropped having the grid switched on by default. We can turn that on. If we go View, Construction Grid Display, we can switch that on and we can actually see a grid. Um, I find this immensely helpful because when you zoom in you can see that you're getting closer. This is a, by default is a 2 meter grid. Um, and so that way we can actually kind of figure out where we are and have some sort of scale to things. Um, we can edit that grid um, while we're on the topic. So um, if you go to um, the view grid and editing planes, grids and background, we can set up the, the grid size here. So this is the two meter grid. Uh, so by default, my units at least are in um, millimeters. So I can change that to um, be you know, a, a one meter grid. Um, and we can do some kind of weird wacky things in here as well. So I can go sort of like two meter grids and then have like, I don't know, maybe 500 by 500. And I can say, do one of those. So then it'll go two meters, 500, two meters, 500, two meters, 500. So this would be pretty cool if you're doing some sort of landscape thing where it had like, you know, two meter sort of planting blocks and 500 mil wide paths or something like that. A bit narrow, but yeah. So you can actually set up your own custom grid um, uh, we can even do things like you know angle it. We can change the colours of this, um, including the background colour here as well. Um, so if you know you like how Archicad used to be a while back, where it had this like pale yellow sort of interface, you could do that. I think that's hideous though. So I'm just going to make that completely white. Cool. I think I've ended up with it slightly yellow. <laughs> Um, that's why we've got this little slider up here. It should be white now. Okay. Um, we can angle the grid. Well, I'm going to show you how to do this later on, but we can actually go through and, and rotate our grid so that it was on, on a particular angle. We can do that graphically later on. Um, and we've also got a snap grid. So the snap grid we can turn on um, up here. Um, and so it will snap to 50 mil gaps. I'm just going to put this back to zero, zero, so I can end up with the grid like that. Okay, so this is also related to this, where I was saying we could angle that grid visually. So this would be really helpful if we had, like, for example, a road um, running along here, um, and we wanted to draw things that are relative to the road angle. So, for example, a driveway coming off 90 degrees to the um, to the road, and then a house um, being angled, um, you know, perpendicular to the to the road. Um, we could have a a, um, a rotated grid. Um, and then we can also snap back to our vertical grid if we wanted to do things that were orientated to north, for example. Um, now, at the moment, if I go and try and draw, so at the moment I've just got the wall tool on, 
um, wherever I click um, it will start that line however if I wanted to snap to my grid I can go to my grid snap here um, and so now you'll see that tiny little black dot chasing my cursor around okay so that means if I click there it's actually going to be snapping to that two meter grid okay which means that you can just kind of like quickly you know draw something um, and it's going to dimension up really nicely okay so just notice um, oh, I'll, I'll come back to that um, we've also got our snap grid okay so now when I go and draw things you'll notice that the distance there is going up in increments of 50 mil okay so I don't end up with some kind of crazy um, dimensions when I finish this process as I would with here see so it's going up and well it says millimeters it's probably even less yeah, is it even more accurate than that? It'd be like fractions of a millimetre. All right. Um, we have got the ability to type values in from an X and Y position, and that X and Y start at this X down here. So that's our, our project zero. Okay. So really handy, especially if you've got like a survey point and you know that you know, your survey point is, is here and the house is two metres across and one metre up. Um, or it'll be about here. <laughs> okay, well, let's say four meters across and two meters up, and that's where it's going to start from. Okay. Um, I'd love to actually do a, t a session actually on on using construction lines um, and how to draw up um, kind of you know a, a real world site from measurements. Um, I've got some good cunning tricks on how to do that, um, but yeah, maybe a, a tutorial in the future. Okay, so that's the um, coordinate palette. Um, we've also got things in here, you'll notice, again, this is all relative to um, our origin um, and um, a Z height, which isn't very relevant right now, but that will be important later on, especially when it comes to objects. So, like, you know, placing a chimney on top of a roof. All right. Um, the other palette that is really handy to have on is the control box. Okay, so it has got an OK button, so you know, or a cancel button, you know, so I can finish this wall. I can go, yeah, just hit OK, OK, and it will finish that wall. Um, I could cancel something as well, so it's kind of convenient. Um, however, it has got some really awesome things up in here. So, for example, this first one gives us a whole bunch of different controls in here. So we can go perpendicular. Okay, so if I want to draw a line that's perpendicular to, uh, sorry, a wall that's perpendicular to this one. I can click on it, okay, I want to be perpendicular to this, watch if I just hover over that, oh sorry, highlight it, I want to be perpendicular to that, and away we go. Um, they don't even have to be connected either, so if I wanted to do a wall over here that was perpendicular to this one, I can go and start my wall and go, oh, I need a per perpendicular to that, cool, and I know that that is now 90 degrees to this. Um, I can also do ones that are parallel, so if I want to be parallel to this wall, okay, and away we go. Um, now you'll notice that we are also getting this sort of heads up sort of thing as well, so yeah, I don't have to use this to be perpendicular, you'll actually notice that, see it's giving us a little heads up there that this is 90 degrees, okay, and I've also got the ability um, to type in values. Okay, so um, I can go D2000 and the A is 45. Cool. And so I know that that's now heading at 45 degrees um, and it's two meters long. All right. Um, we can also edit um, this wall. Now you'll notice that at the moment when I select it, I'll select this poly wall, it's made up of lots of individual wall segments, right? Um, and the nodes, so let's see these little things here, um, are hollow, okay, as opposed to possibly this one, which is solid. Um, so that hollow node means that it's part of a group. So when we draw a poly wall, okay, so a poly wall is this one here, um, what we're actually um, doing is drawing a whole bunch of individual walls and grouping them together. However, we can break this group apart without ungrouping them. Okay, so normally we'd go up here to group and ungroup, okay but we can suspend the groups okay and that suspending the groups is also controlled um, over here so we can go that's our groups and then we can go suspend groups and when I do suspend groups I can now select the individual parts 
Okay, so this control box is really handy. Other things we can do on here um, is, for example, um, the magic wand. So, if you notice, if I go to the um, slab tool, um, I want to talk more about how these um, these tools work, but I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. Um, but if we go to the slab tool, you'll notice that there's no there's no circular um, slab tool. Okay, so I can't draw a round slab. However, down here I have got an a, an arc tool. Okay, and there's there's several different ways of drawing it. So if I wanted to draw um, a three point arc. Oh, so three point circle actually let's do that see so I've got a circle that's going to fit between here here and here cool so now I've got this circle that fits inside this space and then I can go and grab my slab and I can either click this button or it actually has a keyboard shortcut the space bar so if I hold down the space bar you'll notice that it turns to the magic wand and I can actually click on that circle and there is now a slab in there. Pretty cool, eh? Um, that, uh, while, while I'm talking about the magic wand actually, um, let's just say I've got another circle, right? So I want to draw another circle um, that is actually um, the same diameter as this, sorry not the di same diameter, but the same central point as this circle but with a larger diameter. How am I going to do that? Um, well, I could hover over here, um, click on there, and then, oh sorry, first I'd need to have a circle like this. Notice how I changed it even though I was part way through drawing it. A lot of settings can be changed even when you're halfway through drawing something. Okay, so I can go through and um, create a larger circle. So let's say I wanted to do one and, um, but I want it to be um, let's say one meter wider than this circle. However, this circle has a radius of 3,378, um, which isn't very convenient. So let's go into here and we'll actually see. We've actually got, so I'm just going to escape out of this for a second. You'll actually see here we've got a whole bunch of options, including this one here. So if I go and click on that and then go, oops, go like that. I'm going to magic one this, and now look, I can actually increase this. And notice the distance is from the line that I clicked. So now I can go, say it was 1200. I can't remember what I said before, but now it's 1200. Cool. And this is now 1200 mil from here to here. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to select this slab and just delete it. Okay, so there is no slab in the center here. Um, so at the moment, I've just got the 2D lines. Now, I can now go through, and if you'll notice, when I go and hold down the space bar, the cursor changes. See when I'm going over one line, um, the, the, the smart cursor um, changes its appearance. Okay, And you even get an indication of the shape that it's going to follow. So if I go and click in here, I will now end up with a slab that fits in here. Now this is really important if you're doing something like concrete and you're going to pour this concrete and you'd want to know the exact volume. If I'd made that slab go right underneath my buildings, um, it's not representing what's happening in the real world. Um, which means that when I go and calculate the volumes of concrete that I need, um, it's going to be inaccurate. So you really do have to um, design in any BIM. Um, accurately okay so that includes you know getting things to snap to the right locations um, and and you know that you know slabs aren't going inside other slabs and all that sort of carry on all right so I'm gonna add concrete to there and maybe we're gonna do one in here as well okay so we've actually got three slabs now like that now that's all cool, but Zane, it's very difficult to visualize. So let's just talk quickly about the 3D view. So if we go F3, that will flick us into the 3D view. And I can either use this control down the bottom here to orbit around. Okay. Or I can actually use this little guy down here and go and explore the environment as if I was in some sort of, um, I don't know, first person shoot em up type game. Okay, and so you can see that my slab stops at the edge of the wall okay it doesn't go inside the room um, 
also while I'm here now this is a little bit different with the Mac and the PC so if I um if I want to um, visualize just these elements um, what I can do is go F4 so if um, a lot of keyboards you have to hold down the function key and go F4 by the way so that's Fn um, key on a lot of keyboards um, and then go F4 um, it will show me just that however if you're on a PC it's F5 correct me if I'm wrong I'm pretty certain it's F5 um, pretty much all the keyboard shortcuts are the same on the Mac and the PC um, with the obvious exception of the um, the command key um, and the and the control key being around the other other way around um, so yeah if you are following on a PC um, you just switch the command key with the control key and it all should be good um, Archicad actually uses just a lot of just you know simple shortcuts like holding down the space bar all right so if I want to go get everything back again go function F4 on the on the Mac or um, function um, F5 um, on the PC and everything will come back so anything I have selected I can visualize just that one item okay anything I don't have selected and I go F5 or F4 on the on the Mac um, and that will um, then reset that view okay if I want to get back to the 2d view F2 that's the same on Mac and PC all right um, now there is a couple other controls in here which are quite convenient um, so this one which is should be on by default um, turns on a little tick mark um, by default on the halfway point okay so if I want to um, have a, a line coming off here um, it will be at the halfway point but we have got other options here so I can do divisions okay so you notice that now when I hover something over something it's dividing it into three so one two three um, and it is dependent on you know, um, on where I hover my cursor okay so you'll notice that it doesn't line up because the um, the, the third point from here to here is going to be different as from here to here um, you really do need to take that into consideration so if we're dividing this room internally up it's going to be different to um, dividing it up um, from the outside wall We've also got um, percentages, and again, it's um, dependent on where you enter your cursor. Okay, so if I want to get it 20% from this end, okay, I go and enter from this side. If I go from this side, I'll get 20% from there. Now, notice it's doing it over the entire length. So that's where we can actually change this. See, it says between nodes, but we can do it between intersecting points. See, so now when I hover over, there's a 20% mark, and there's a 20% mark. So it's doing it 20% from here to here okay so again if I go and hover over here um, we should be able to get 20% of a line from that point to that point cool we can change that just right there if we wanted 30% or 40% or whatever um, we've also got distances so again this is going to measure from this point and it's going to go all the way around can we get one that it's all drawn to the grid so it's going to be always quite accurate okay so we can actually hover over there and it's going to measure one meter one meter one meter which will be different if I hover from this end okay so now it measures from this end all right and we can switch that off completely and so if it's not appearing that needs to be switched on all right so that's our, our control box um, and our coordinates box um, or palette I should say and um, yeah I think we're going to leave it for there um, and when we come back um, I will do one on on you know using the different tools and the settings and that sort of carry on awesome thank you till next time